Now, I've never done a video like this before, but since I enjoyed playing FNAF Into the Pit so much, I decided to have a little fun after completing the main story, and decided to mess around with some of the, well, difficulty settings. This video is also going to have a lot of heavy spoilers, so since the game just came out, please do not watch this if you do not want to be spoiled, but if you do, or if you've already played the game for yourself, then this video will probably be the most chaotic piece of gameplay and commentary made about the video game so far. So let's begin. Now instead of getting right into the challenge, I have a little game for you guys. I am actually doing a giveaway away of FNAF into the pit and during the sponsorship segment because yes there is a sponsorship I hid clues that add up to a secret code phrase and anyone who figures out the code and is a public subscriber will immediately be entered into the giveaway and after a couple days I will reply to the winner's comment with further instructions on how to receive your prize so all you do is you have to comment the code phrase be a public subscriber and if you don't know how to do that you can look up how to do it it is very easy and after a couple days you may or may not get your comment responded to by me with further instructions and the clues could be hidden anywhere in this video so keep a vigilant eye out for them one could have already passed by now, and one could be at the very end of the video, who knows? But anyways, let's move on to today's sponsorship before we get into the challenge, and as I said, keep a lookout for clues. Now real quick, I have a question for you guys. Did you enjoy the FNAF 10 year anniversary? Are you sad that there's not going to be any more new FNAF content for a while? Well I can help you because that's where Face Moji comes into play. Now what is Face Moji you might be asking? Well Face Moji allows you to customize your keyboard to be anything you want, which includes making it FNAF related. If you don't have money to buy into the pit, or if you just don't want to spend money on any of these new FNAF games or whatever it is, you can just use Face Moji for free to customize your keyboard and more to include more FNAF into your life. Plus, with their new video keyboard feature, the possibilities are literally endless. So if you're interested, you can check out the link in my description and my channel to use it for yourself. Now back to the challenge. Now for anyone unfamiliar, let me give you a little lecture like you're back in middle school again. FNAF, good. And because of that, all of you guys should subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, since FNAF good, once you complete the game, you get various new things to mess around with. And one of those things are the increased difficulty settings, and a brand new one which was never before seen in any other FNAF games, with those being the advanced settings, where you can quite literally change everything. You can set all the AI's difficulties, and also decide if you want hard mini games or easy ones, but most importantly, you can decide if you want zero hiding spots along with zero distractions, which is an issue you'll see later on in this run. But oh wait, of course, I forgot the actual most important one, with that being permadeath. Now if I am correct, which half of the time I'm not, this is the first ever FNAF game to have permadeath, and I'm sure that you know it all as well correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong, because you guys always do, so I guess you could do that right now. But if I am correct, this is the first ever FNAF with a permadeath mode, and it is absolutely terrifying. And since the permadeath mode is, you know, very hard, that makes the game, well, very hard. Anyways, I plop in all the settings to make the game a complete nightmare, and then I begin to torture myself and my little heart by clicking start. And and I immediately skip through all the beginning and boring cutscenes and dialogue because reading is for nerds. I then book it into the ball pit when I load in and time travel back to the future. Oh wait, I meant the past. But regardless of where I time travel to, I time travel into one epic party. I then run over to the first two people I see who are willing to give me attention and then proceed to skip past everything they say because I'm a true Sigma male and I don't need friends and I don't care about what anyone else has to say. They then proceed to run into the arcade and I follow because I realize I'm actually going to be lonely and I need friends. After I follow them, I get invited to a game of ski ball where I totally purposely lose and they get teleported back into the dining room for some reason. But then my two best new pals want to play tag and I try to escape by going into another room, but apparently I can't do that so I get teleported back into the dining room again. But they must have thought my idea of going into another room was great because then we proceed to play hide and seek, but for some reason I run the opposite way from the ball pit because that would be an amazing hiding spot and I don't know why I didn't go in there. Anyways, I find this very conveniently placed animatronic suit where I climb right into it without a care in the world. Oh boy, someone has been watching their map pad or game theory lately, because that's how he gets spring locked, but I guess he doesn't know that. Sometime later, and they still can't find me, but some weird bunny creature almost does, but still can't match my amazing hide and seek skills, so he doesn't find me. And since he wasn't invited, and since he couldn't find me, he proceeds to go on a rampage destroying the pizzeria and kidnapping kids. I get out of my suit to see the commotion, and I see a group of kids run outside. I think about doing that as well, but realize that maybe I want to go home and actually see my parents again, so I decide to hop back into the ball pit. I come out of the ball pit that certainly gave me a pink eye, and speak of the devil, there's my dad. But he must have been practicing magic while I was gone because he decided to pull the classic now you see me and now you don't. And look, it's the bunny I saw while I was playing hide and seek. He must still be angry he couldn't find me, so he takes my dad and makes me find him. Ah. How the Terrans have tabled. But before he could do that, I saved my father. Ha, you stupid bunny, you can't do- Oh, wait, he's, uh, 
that's that's not my dad that must have been one awkward drive back home but i won't know because i just skipped it all anyways back at home i speed run to call my mom because stranger danger and this is where the first issue of this run comes in in order to get my new stepdad out of the room i need to make a distraction but since there isn't any distractions i just have to run in circles like a cat at 3 a.m with zoomies until he comes out to yell at me and beat me fortunately this works and i run into my room so he doesn't beat me with his large yellow metal hands or whatever he has and then i go to grab my new stepdad's phone and immediately call Call mom even though I should have just called 911. But my new stepdad didn't like that so he comes in with the belt but I use my inner Batman to hide under my bed but for some reason everything comes rolling out from under my bed as if it were built on a mountain slope but I again use my inner Batman skills to grab everything in quick time. Then I finally hear my mom knock at the door which makes me wonder how she got home so quick but anyways I forget about that and I meet her. Immediately skip the dialogue and go back to the ball pit so I can get my revenge on my stepdad I mean the yellow bunny man you, you know who I mean. The second I get back to Freddy Fazbear pizzeria I hear crying of a child get it crying child whatever and look he's stuffed inside of an endoskeleton this is why we watch map pet guys so we don't accidentally end up getting spring locked but anyways I ditch the potential spring lock victim and I go back to Jeff's and I go to take out the trash for him just so I can get the basement key but with this key I can find a screwdriver to free the kid so I go back and I free the kid but since I found him so fast the yellow rabbit man didn't like that so with him still furious about losing hide and seek he chases me again so I go back home and spend some quality time with my new stepdad oh it was just a dream I guess Yes. Um, oh, okay. Oh, wait, he was real. Never mind. I then book at the school, but not without grabbing my lunch first. And I am enjoying recess when a kid decides to detonate a bomb. Oh, wait, that's firecrackers. Uh, that kind of looked like dynamite. Uh. Same thing. I then immediately leave school, stop a girl from getting bullied, and then she gives me a cool notebook that I immediately never look at again. Mainly because I have bigger and more yellow issues at hand. I then go home, immediately leave home, and then go back to the ball pit. And this is where I almost die for the first time this run because of a locked door, and because I don't have anywhere to hide. I have to jump back into the ball pit to save myself. And this is my main way of saving myself throughout the majority of this run because there's not really a lot of hiding spots. Now let me just say that there is some hiding spots that can't be disabled, like under Oswald's bed, the vent, and Golden Freddy and maybe a couple more that I don't know about. So no, I didn't forget to disable them. You just literally can't disable them. I don't know why, but I guess, you know, it's just part of the game, whatever. Regardless of what the reason is, I continue exploring the pizzeria until I get jump scared by the pizza queen herself, Chica. I then proceed to run down the hallway and trip, but she doesn't kill me or attack me because she just wanted my lunch from earlier and I still have that on me. Mmm, must taste like pink guy. I then head back to Jeff's and get some pizza for the hungry chicken, but Jeff is blocking the door to the kitchen and I spent all my money buying this game so I can't buy pizza. So I use my big brain and remember I saw a rat in the hallway where Chica jumped me so I grab a rat trap and head back to the pizzeria and I am surely in for one heck of a surprise because all of the lights are off now ah an unfair advantage yellow man okay that's not gonna stop me though. But luckily I can see in the dark, so this doesn't deter me. So I just make my way to the fuse box and turn the power on. I then go towards the rat and place a trap. And then on my way out, I run in the spring Bonnie, almost. But luckily I have sneak 100, so he doesn't notice me. Then I just wait for him to leave and then head back to Jeff's. Since I am a straight up menace, I give the rat to some poor lady at the pizzeria and then she starts tweaking. Unfortunately, she never saw Ratatouille or else maybe she would have had a different reaction to that. Jeff moves away from the kitchen door to tend with the small chef that escapes from under his hat. And I make my way to the kitchen. I grab some old pizza and then give it to Chica, but not before I get caught by the wannabe hide and seek expert, almost twice. Now I want to say right here, 30 minutes into this run, my recording automatically stopped, but fear not, I had the built-in speedrunner clock activated, because this wasn't just a can you beat challenge, no, this was also a speedrun, kind of casual speedrun, I don't know. Anyways, the reason I bring this up is because we can see how much time my recording software missed, which was around 17 minutes, which really sucks because I could have had like 15 more hide and seek jokes or stepdad jokes in the video, but nonetheless, you can still see the time times are the same so this run isn't fake. Not like it would really matter anyways, I'm just making a fun little silly YouTube video, it's not like this is gonna be in the world record or whatever, so who cares? I'm not saying that it is fake, it, it isn't, but just don't get upset at me. Anyways, night 2, day 3, and night 3 were pretty fine, which you can see by the times. I just sped through the days extremely quick, and night 3 was very easy compared to night 2, mainly because the vent in the basement was open, allowing me a good safe spot, so I actually had balls for the night and decided to not hide and be scared. Now with that quick recap, back to the stepdad jokes. I skipped school on day 4 and went straight to the pit where I was welcomed by Freddy, but since none of that recorded you just have to trust me on that. Afterwards I went to meet up with the kid who tried to blow up the playground with firecrackers since I needed something to distract Freddy, as he doesn't like bright and loud things. Anyways the firecracker kid wouldn't give me a firecracker, so I made my way back to Jeff's and fixed up some of the old arcade machines so I could win a prize to trade with him. Now here's a tongue twister for you, I decided to help buff helpy get buff. Actually it wasn't that bad, but um, just try saying it 5 times really fast. I don't know why I wrote that in the script. <laughs> 
I spent like five minutes trying to say that. Anyways, I received my prize and then proceeded to buy some illegal fireworks. I mean, legal firecrackers. But my stepdad must have caught wind of the deal gone wrong and he swiftly took me home. Now, this was the part I was dreading during the whole playthrough because I couldn't just easily leave the house or hide anymore. I had to grab the ladder from the attic and bring it down to the basement. Now, we're around 50 minutes into the run, so this would be a lot of time lost if I messed this up. But there's a catch with the ladder. You make a lot of noise when you move with it, so you have to move very slowly in order to not get detected. Now, this wouldn't be an issue. That's if I had places to hide or distractions to make. But since I only had the bedroom to hide in, and since your stepdad roams the hallways waiting to beat you, it's very difficult. Now, I slowly made my way to the attic and slowly made my way down with the ladder, but I got spotted, so I ran. And this happened twice, I, I think, until I accidentally ran into him. And as I tried to escape, I ran into something invisible and got caught by him at the door, meaning I failed this run. This run, because I had an ace up my sleeve this whole time. Now, remember earlier when I was talking about the kids running out of the pizzeria in fear at the beginning of the game? Well, this is where run two comes into play. I did everything the same as you do in prologue, but instead of me running away from the kids, I followed. And what happened then? Well, you can actually get a hidden secret ending, meaning yes, you can beat FNAF into the pit with permadeath on, and while speedrunning it, and while having the hardest settings on, and it only took me four minutes. Yeah, I know that was kind of a screwy ending, but I did want to get this video out for you guys quick, so yeah, I do apologize. I'll definitely come back to this challenge and officially beat it in the future though, but I just wanted to get something out for this weekend, and because I just wanted to try out the permadeath mode, and I thought it'd be a fun video to make, regardless if I actually pass the challenge or not. I am planning on getting a better PC next month, so I'll actually be able to live stream and stuff. So if you want to see me live stream, or if you want to see me live stream challenges like this, because originally I wanted to live stream this, but my PC is literally just terrible. So if you want to support me and help me get that PC, just subscribe or don't even do anything. You watching this video helps enough. I just want to say thank you to the channel members and don't let your stepdad walk in on you with a ladder or else he'll beat you to death.